This is the effect that we're going to be going for in this tutorial. You can see here, within certain ranges, this character looks 3D. Stereoscopic if you're in VR, looking like it's coming right at you. When really in reality, it's an illusion because it's only a 2D image. We start in Mid Journey or Stable Diffusion, generate an image that you enjoy, go to this GitHub URL and install Midas to create your depth map, or use the extension for the automatic 1111. Alternatively, there are several sites available on the internet which will allow you to generate depth maps as well. I'll place links in the description down below. Here you see the depth map on the right that I was able to generate from the image on the left. This image is not quite right though for us to get the best effect when we apply this depth map shader in Unity. What we need to do is modify this slightly to make it a little bit more effective so that the illusion is more convincing. So on the right is the original depth map and on the left is the modified depth map. And essentially what I did was I went into Photoshop and brightened up certain areas of the image where I wanted the shading to reflect a more pronounced stereo effect or 3D effect inside of Unity. And if you uh, do not know, the way depth maps work is the light areas are closer to the camera and the darker areas are farther away from the camera. So first of all, you'd want to have a nice uniform middle gray color in the background and then ensure that your edge is relatively smooth as in the original depth map, but then increase some of the shading to contour the face, parts of the body like the arms, the breastplate, side of the body, and so on. And this is simply done with uh, a soft brush in Photoshop, gently coming in with low opacity and building up your depth map area by area until you come up with something like this. So once you have a depth map that you're feeling somewhat happy about, you can then go and test it in Unity. And uh, this is the crux of this tutorial. We're going to look at the way we take the 2D image here and turn it into something that's 3D in Unity. Now you can see there are limitations with this method. If you move too far to the left or the right, up or down, the illusion will break. And I'll show you what that looks like right now. You can see we get a very weird warping effect, which is not what we want. Now, one way around that is, of course, to make sure that you only go within certain rotations on the X and Y axis, and also to ensure that your settings are correct in the shader, which we're going to cover in a moment. You can also use some post effects as I have here, like Bloom and some camera blur, which covers up some of the uh, issues. Uh, ultimately, I imagine this sort of thing could be used for something like a storyboard, a uh, rough freeviz if you're doing virtual production, or even just putting together some images for fun, or the use that I enjoy the most is creating these experiences in VR where the images appear as if they are coming at you, hence the uh, stereo effect. Effect. And this can be very convincing and a lot of fun in VR. Uh, you can use a, a number of flat images and set up your VR scene with these images, uh, which are essentially just planes. So there is a very low polygon count. Performance is high, but you get a really beautiful, rich looking scene with very low cost in terms of the actual geometry. Without any further ado, let's take a look at how we create this effect in Unity with a shader. Now in Unity, I'm using version 2021.3.8 F1. It's a long-term support version. I'm using the Universal Render Pipeline. It's important to use the Universal Render Pipeline so that you'll be able to use the shader graph feature that Unity makes available. We also want to be able to, at some point, put this into VR and the high definition render pipeline will not support this shader graph effect in VR, so that's why we're going with the URP instead. So, let's build this from scratch. Okay, here we are in an empty Unity scene. First thing I'm going to do is bring in some resources. I'm going to right-click on this folder, and I'm going to Import New Assets, and we're going to bring in Mech Girl and Mech Girl Depth. So, these are the images that we just looked at a little bit earlier. Uh, the first thing we need to do is make sure that they're imported as Sprite 2D UIs so that the alpha channel is respected. As you can see here, we have the depth map we looked at before and the actual base image on the right. Now we're going to right-click Create Shader Graph URP Unlit Shader Graph. I'm going to call this Mech Girl. And I'm going to double-click on it to open up Shader Graph. We're going to maximize to give ourselves plenty of room. Now, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Shader Graph. I won't be going into details, but we'll just do a basic overview of how to set this stereo effect up. So I'm going to just bring over my vertex and sh fragment shader to the right. 
bring my inspector over here, my preview over here to set up the scene so it's easier to use. And we're going to be bringing in our resources by clicking on this plus icon. We're going to create a texture 2D. We're going to call it Mech Girl. We're going to create another texture 2D. We're going to call it Mech Girl Depth. Just make sure I name that properly. Mech Girl Depth. I'm going to click on Mech Girl. I'm going to go up here into Properties. I'm going to click on this default here. And select Mech Girl from Select Texture. I'm going to do the same for Depth. I'm going to select Mech Girl Depth. Now we're going to use our resources. We're going to right click, create node, type SAM for sample, sample texture 2D, grab mech girl, pull it into the first slot as our texture, right click, create node, PAR for parallax, parallax occlusion mapping, grab our mech girl depth, pull it into the first slot here for our height map, and now we're going to use this node to drive how the pixels are pushed on this node. We do that by grabbing this parallax UVs and connect it to the UV in over here. Now we're going to right click on fragment, add block node, alpha, right click, add block node, ambient occlusion. We're going to connect the alpha on our image to the alpha here. We're going to grab the base color of our image and bring it into the base color here. You're going to right click on your main preview and click on cube so we can get a better view of this. And it's still flat but we still have some work to do. Before we go any further let's just make sure the settings in the main graph are correct. So you're going to go into graph settings here, surface type switch from opaque to transparent and that way we get rid of the background. Again, we don't have any stereo effects going on yet but at least we have a nice alpha channel cutting. So we're going to right click, add block, ambient occlusion and drag pixel depth offset to our ambient occlusion connection here. Okay, I'm going to move in here and these are the settings that are going to let us see the magic happen. We're going to crank up the amplitude, which is going to crank up the effect. And you may have to go pretty far here to really start seeing an effect. You're starting to see as you move it around in different angles, you can move in. Now we're getting a nice effect on the image. I'm going to go a little bit further. And, uh, you know, I want to pull, push it up till it breaks because uh, in our scene we're going to control the angle so you're not going to quite see it break. And you, when you come about at this angle here, uh, you can see the illusion break, but we can crank this up and just make sure we don't do that in our scene. We're going to keep it at about, about that range there. Now the other thing you want to do is you want to crank up these steps here, and what that's going to do is that's going to allow us to have a nice ambient occlusion effect where some of the pieces of the image overlap on other pieces. It will create a nice illusion of shadow. Okay, I'm going to go up a little further. And I think, maybe I'll take it down a little bit. I think this is good. We're going to hit Save Asset. I'm going to come out of Maximize go into the scene, right click in the hierarchy, 3D objects, and create a quad. We're going to right click on our mech girl shader and create a material. We're going to drag, drag and drop this material onto our quad and voila we have, we have our image. Now one way you can control the distortion is you can hit the R key or the scale tool 
and scale it down to make it more intense or scale it up to smooth it out a bit. And uh, you may want something roughly like that. Okay, now that you have your asset created, you can put it into a scene similar to uh, what I did earlier and actually do the same thing for other elements in the scene. So I'm going to switch out to a scene I created earlier. Save this. And uh, in this one here, you know, like I said earlier, we have some post-processing effects going on. I have another image that I use this effect on, this dragon, and even the back scene, the scene itself has some of these effects. They're a little bit harder to see, but you can now apply animation. Again, you can look at this in VR, and uh, pretty much the sky's the limit. It's up to your imagination. So I hope that was helpful. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Please do subscribe. It does help the algorithm, and hit the bell notification icon so you'll be notified when the next tutorial comes out. And do give us a like and leave any comments in the comments below if you'd like me to go a little bit deeper into how we use depth maps in Midas or ways of generating depth maps, let me know and I can certainly make a tutorial based on uh, your request. Okay, see you next time. Please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when the next part of this tutorial becomes available.